Chapter 2, The Night Before the Last Battle Kino Amerk I can feel Elder Mayan again. I yelled. I told you he couldn't be dead, Piper chimed in. The chief hunter breathed a sigh of relief. Let's pray to the gods that he returns safely because we are going to need his friends to defeat the emperor. Dogen stood silently behind us, and when my mother's gaze fell upon him, he smiled and bowed. My lady, he said softly. It is a surprise to be standing right in front of you today. I buried you with my own hands. Goemi blushed. We dug her out, she said. We had to save her. Mira was keen on saving the beautiful lady from her attackers. We didn't really know it was the emperor himself who was attacking her. Had we known, we probably wouldn't have meddled. You never told me that before, mother said. There was a man who had his hands on your neck, and before he could kill you, Miro had already touched your heart, so you fell limp, and they thought you died. It was a good thing that they didn't take your body with them. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to revive you. Miro used his power on her? I asked. I was surprised but not angry. There was no other way we could have saved her, Goemi said. Your big friend there, she said, pointing at Dogen was already knocked unconscious. And Miro and I had no chance of defeating someone who could command lightning. It was the only way to save her. Goemi's eyes moistened as she continued. Her hair had started to grow, but it was still short, and while there were scars on her face, I noticed she looked really pretty. She turned to my mother. I'm sorry, Mama. I mean, Nia, I mean, Lady Lamare, she began but we were so alone and lonely. When we rescued you and couldn't remember anything, we thought it best to give you a false identity. Besides, that mistaken identity would have protected you from the Emperor. Miro and I wanted nothing but to keep you safe. And I guess that's how we ended up lying about you. We didn't want Kino to suffer, but at that point, when we met him, we honestly didn't know what to make of the encounter anymore. All we wanted was to have you with us. It was not easy to let you go. But you have slapped me already, Mama. And you have hated us since you learned about the lie. I hope that by this time, you have found it inside your heart to forgive us, Goemi said. Oh, Goemi, Mother said. Then she embraced her. You were a delightful daughter, and the way you cared for your brother was admirable. But the lies. I'm terribly sorry for them, Mistress Lamare. Mama, you may call me Mama, Mother turned to me and gestured for me to join them in the embrace. I rushed in and hugged them tightly. I hold no more grudges against Goemi. She was sobbing, and my eyes were moistening too. Then all the others joined in the hug. Dogen was the last to put his long arms around all of us. Come, Mistress Laren said. Nobody saw her when she came, and when Piper saw her mother, she quickly ran to hug her tightly. We have not won the war against the Emperor yet, but if this would be the last night we're spending together, we might as well celebrate it. All that matters is we're together now. And then tomorrow, we will fight. Papa will guide us tomorrow, Piper whispered. Mistress Laren tousled her daughter's hair. Of course, your papa will be leading the fight. And Kino's papa will also be there. Mistress Laren was staring straight at my mother. How did you, was all mother could say. Mistress Laren shook her head. I wasn't exactly sure, but hearing the Emperor's words about this prophecy, that out of the Niven blood, Akia would rise again, it was easy to put two and two together. Suddenly, I remembered bits and pieces of you. I couldn't place where I met you, but then, in my memories, I would see the former chief hunter before his demise and somehow, I'm still not sure, but I think you might have something to do with him. And he is of Niven blood. No one could ever question that. I looked up at my mother. Is that who my father was? I asked. Mother's eyes were wet with unshed tears. Then she nodded. His name was Timbuk Lassus. And like you, he had such green eyes. I clutched my mother tightly against me. I thought I would never find out about him, I whispered. Mistress Laren tugged at Piper's hand. Let's go, 
she said and then motioned for the rest of them to leave me with my mother. He was a good man. He was a chief hunter. Before Andoni San Diego became the chief hunter, it was your father. Where does the emperor fit in? I asked. Grandpa told me all about my heritage, or at least, what he did know. So perhaps now you do believe me that you're Northsam's grandson? Mother said askingly. I smiled sheepishly at her. I guess I do believe you now. It was difficult to do so before. Even now, I still find it hard to believe at times. You are his grandson. And moon turns ago, I was known to everyone as Princess Lamare Ariston Amurk, second to the throne of Achaea. And then came wind, McQuinn Storm. He asked for my hand in marriage, and he was able to win your grandfather's heart. Father believed that wind would ensure that the Amurk line would remain strong over the moon turns to come. What he failed to see was that he would be the one to break that lineage, she paused. Or perhaps it was I, you're still too young to understand it, dearest, she said. Wind was, as he had always been, like that from the start. He wanted power. He wanted to rule Achaea, and there was really nothing wrong with that, except if your purpose, instead of serving the world, is serving oneself. I hold myself accountable for that decision because falling in love with someone does not merely happen on a whim. An option presented itself to me, and I made that decision to fall in love with your father, she said. She continued, wind, he didn't know. He only learned about your heritage when he saw your eyes. No one between us has green eyes, and so he could only presume that I had been with another man. Lamare was silent for a while. Forgive me, Kino. I have acted so wrongly in the past. I am your son, I said. What is there to forgive? Mother laughed weakly. Wind could have been your father. Perhaps that's what I'm asking forgiveness for. I hugged her tightly and hoped that she knew that there was nothing to forgive. But there's more that I wanted to know. Tell me more about my father, I said. Mayo Kolo. While we were inside the tent and had nothing better to use for dining tables and chairs, the Nivens created makeshift tables from whatever materials were available to them. Mistress Laren guided us out of the tent and made us all sit in front of a bonfire where some Nivens were roasting wild hogs and fowl. Tonight is a celebration because you were able to reach us before we started this war. Mother, is fighting necessary? Piper asked. War is not a beautiful thing, Mistress Laren began. The Emperor won't leave us in peace. He will either kill us all without any way for us to defend ourselves, or we will stand here, make our voices heard, and fight for what is right. It is unfortunate that he did not listen to our pleas, but it only means that we are making the right choice. The Emperor has no plans of freeing us. He wants all Nivens to stay hidden and afraid for all moon turns. And it's all because of the prophecy. Mistress Lamare continued. The Emperor fears that out of Niven blood, Achaea will rise again. He is not of Niven blood, and that could only mean that whatever greatness is bound to happen in the future, it wouldn't be him who will deliver it to Achaeans. This is why he desperately wants to eradicate the entire Niven clan. Mistress Laren looked far across the Canellan gates. This is why we will fight, although the Emperor already has put us in that disadvantageous position where we could only die, Mistress Laren said. I pray that our ancestors will guide us in this fight tomorrow. She raised a glass and offered a toast. To Nivens and to all Achaeans. May we all be freed from the rule of the Emperor. We raised our glasses and cheered, to Nivens. The other rebels who were with us did the same. From behind me, Jor Passip came out. Chief, there is something that's, he wasn't able to finish what he was about to say because somebody interrupted him. Father? Jor Passip My spine went rigid. It was the voice of my daughter that I remembered from a long time ago. It had changed somehow, but the way she spoke the word father brought memories inside my head. It couldn't be, could it? Slowly, I turned towards the source of the voice and found myself staring at a handsome young woman. Go me? I said. Her hair was rather short and sticking out in all directions, but nevertheless, 
her eyes, they struck me. They were like her mother's. Papa! She cried out before racing towards me and embracing me tightly. You're alive. There was a surge of emotion inside my chest that I could not explain. All I knew was that I was not expecting that on the day that I was supposed to fight for Akia, I would still be able to make amends to my daughter. I broke down in tears. Forgive me, go me. I am sorry for deserting you and your brother, I said. Hush, Papa. I don't hate you. I only want you to come back again. Bubba and I waited a long time for you. Where is he? Where is Miro? He left us. He did some horrible things, Papa. He could kill anyone without touching them, and he, he killed someone I loved. She looked me straight in the eye. Papa, he was wicked. He pretended to be insane all the time that we were together so that I wouldn't leave him. Stop, go me, I said. It wasn't his fault. While you were growing up, you experienced nothing but desertion. If you must hate him, hate me instead because it is my fault that he turned out that way. Oh, go me, you don't know how many times I laid awake in the night wondering how my children had been. At times, I would dream that you and your twin were being chased by wolves. I shook my head, and when I next spoke, my voice was shaking. And I would wake up with this feeling of paralyzing loss that I would have to shake off the entire day. Goemi hugged me tightly again. But why did you have to go? Because. I was a coward. It's a long story. Before I met your mother, I was in love with someone else. And to tell you honestly, I still love this woman. Goemi's face crumpled, but she nodded. Love cannot be forced on someone, Papa. I know that. You cannot choose whom you love. It is so, my love. Now, pray tell me, where is your brother? I have to make amends to him. He is here, with the Emperor, Lamare said. I stood up and bowed. My lady. There's no need for that. I am a common woman, Lamare said. What is my son doing in Canela? I asked. When he left us, we didn't know where he was headed. It was only later when we saw posters of his face that we learned he was in Canela. He wanted his revenge against everyone who ever wronged him. He wanted to be important, to be somebody, and he knew that the emperor would value his power. It was Goemi who answered. What power have you developed, my love? I asked. I can revive dead people, she said, pausing. But I can only revive those whose hearts Miro touched. I gasped. What have I done? Nothing, Lamare said. You did nothing wrong. These powers are gifts from the gods. None of this is your fault. You don't understand. I was not in love with their mother when I had them. Their grandma used their power on me to coerce me into staying with her daughter. But the children that we had were not created out of love. And that's probably why the gods tainted their powers. Goemi began sobbing. Perhaps it was hard for her to hear that her father did not love her mother. I reached out a hand to Goemi and pulled her towards me. I love you, Goemi. Both of you. You must understand that it was not by choice that I did not love your mother. Before I could even get the chance to love her, your grandma had already used her power on me. All my emotions died. It was as though I were alive but was devoid of any feeling. Shortly after I left you, I felt something inside of me change. Then it sank in, my emotions were back. I could feel again. And when I realized that I had been toyed with by your grandmother, I became angry at being manipulated. But it doesn't mean that I did not love you and your brother. Goemi was pressing her face against my chest and hugging me as though she never wanted to let go. My shirt was soaked with her tears. There's no need to explain, Papa. Bubba and I waited for you to return, and we said that it didn't matter what your reasons were. We just wanted you back. It is amazing how these events have turned out. It is a reunion of sorts, Lamare said. Laren smiled. We are grateful to have you here, Jor. Is there a chance that perhaps we can convince your son to change sides? He can kill hundreds in minutes because of his power. And look at the size of our army. 
it would be close to impossible to defeat the emperor's men, Laren said. Sadly, we did not separate with fondness, Chief Hunter, I said. Neither did we, Gomi retorted. He just wanted to be with the emperor. But he loves you, Quila said. He adores you. Actually, if there's anyone among us who can convince Miro, it's not going to be Master Jor, but you, Gomi. He worships the land that you walk on. It was this same love that made him kill Arden. Her voice broke when she said Arden's name. Lamare quickly grabbed Quila and put her arm around her shoulder, squeezing her against her side. I will try, Gomi said softly. Papa, we can do it together. Think about how happy he'd be to see both of us. He wanted a family he can belong with, and now there's us. We will do it, then, Chief Hunter, I said. Instead of fighting, we will work on reaching him so that we can save the lives of our fighters. Who will lead your men then, Jor? Laren asked. Romeo will be more than capable of doing that, I said. Me. Pick me. Mayo squealed. I want to be a soldier like my father. He looked a little bit scared, but his chest was thrust outward as though he was full of courage. Yeah, Mayo and I can join Master Romeo's group. We will be there fighting with your men, Master Jor, Kino said. And if the two of you will fight with them, of course, that's where I will be, Piper said. We're in this together, he said. And what about Dracus? Mayo said. He will stay in the main camp. He's too little to fight, Kino said. He turned to look at the dragon he was holding in his arms. It had grown hard scales all over its tiny body. Its eyes were red and from its nose blew wisps of smoke. Dragons grow quickly, and should we get defeated now, we can perhaps retaliate after a year with the dragon and see how we can fight him again. If we lose, the Emperor will get hold of Dracus, and there will be no second chance for us, Kino said. We must remember this night, Laren began. It is when we all came together in one place, had our last meal, as a family reunited. Let this be our inspiration for the battle we are about to face. This is what we will lose should the Emperor defeat us. Living won't mean a thing if we will lose each other. Let's take some time to enjoy this moment. I hope it won't be the last time that we'll get to celebrate like this, but, Lamare said. But we still have to draw up our plans. Romeo interrupted the conversation. I have spoken with the Niven elders. We know what to do. The Emperor's men are many, but we will dent their numbers for sure. The goal is to take the palace. And when we do that, when we defeat the Emperor, who will lead us, Chief Hunter? Laren's face was serious. I will lead the Nivens back to our province, and we will rebuild Nivenon again? As for Canela. She turned towards Lamare. Isn't it yours to take, Lamare? All eyes were studying Lamare who herself looked a little bit surprised. Her mouth was slightly open, but at the same time, her eyes were narrowed as though she was figuring out what had happened. Mother, Kino said. I want to go back to Nibidin with Piper and Mayo. Or just go back to Wawang village. Is it really what you want, son? Lamare asked. So suddenly, her voice sounded so regal and cold. It was enough to send chills down anyone's spine. Can we go back to how it used to be? Kino asked, although it seemed to me that he already knew the answer to his question. After everything that had happened, do you think you can just go back to being a simple villager again? To someone who had to trade fruits and vegetables to have enough coins to buy some bread? To go back to school and deal with the bullies? Or go back to that time when you have yet to discover your power and heritage? You must learn to put all of these behind you now, Kino, Lamare said shifting her tone. She studied her son carefully. It is in your blood, Kino, Lamare said after some time. You come from a clan of leaders. You are of Northsum's blood, who hails from a long lineage of kings. You are of Lassus's blood, who had led the Nibbins for centuries. You have it in you to lead, Kino, don't you see? When we take the Canellan Palace, it is because it needs a new leader, its rightful leader. We'll get back the empire, and I will be there to guide you through it. 
This is your destiny now. Kino must have felt all the burden of having to lead everyone in Canela and must have wondered if he could do it. His mother was looking at him with eyes that exuded support, and for that, he must have believed her. He certainly was not ready, but he would learn in time. I accept, mother, Kino said. Piper gasped. Then Lamare hugged Kino tightly. You will do good. You have a kind heart, she said. Mayo was astounded. Craddy royalty. He bellowed. I always told you that, right? Well, well, well. Just don't get my ass stuck in the dungeon, all right? And don't make me bow to you. Mayo said. Kino laughed weakly, shaking his head. There's not gonna be anything of that sort. Now that everything's clear, we can all finish our meal. We have a plan to rehash and a battle to win, Lamare said. For Nivedon. Romeo shouted. For Nivedon. We all cheered. Romeo de Nicholas. It was already late, but I was too restless to sleep. I was looking at the sky, searching for signs from the gods that we would win this war, but there was none. I tried talking the chief hunter into offering sacrifices, but my pleas went unanswered. The chief hunter said no, out of respect to Elder Man and his friends, and said that the gods would favor us if we spared the lives of their creations. I was unsure how to respond to that, so I let it pass. As for the war, I have to rely on the Niven's capability to turn invisible. In this war, everyone will be using his power. If the Emperor's men had super strength, I was sure that they would be at the front lines, and the Emperor would not have second thoughts about deploying them on the battlefield. So why should I, a mere Niven chief fighter, have qualms about using our powers as well? While it was true that invisibility puts our clan on an unquestionable advantage, so were the powers possessed by the Emperor's men. We will not cheat. If at all, our advantage would only be for a short time. Once the Emperor is able to detect where my men and I were, then that advantage would be gone. For what do my men know about fighting but to use swords and spears in the most basic means? My army was heavy on infantry, and there was hardly any cavalry. I had counted on Jor Passip and his men to fight as my cavalry, but even they did not have enough horses. And chariots? We have none of that. I raised my hands upwards in prayer and asked the gods to guide us in this fight. If I am to be with my ancestors soon, then let my death be for a good reason. Free us, my gods, and let the Nibbins live again along with all the other Akeens. Guide us so that we may not wrong a fellow Akeen. Give us the courage to fight boldly without fear of losing our lives. And should we win this war, let it be according to your will. Let there be no trace of arrogance among us, and allow my people only to take what you would have taken. And if we should lose this war, take us kindly to your home. Be merciful to us, our gods, and take us swiftly, instead of allowing us to suffer under such tyranny again. We fight for you. Send us our ancestors, I paused. All this we pray as one. I lowered my arms and knelt on the ground, and started singing a Niven war song. It was as old as time itself, and hardly anyone among the Nivens knew it, for it was only sung during wartime. And with the Nivens, there was hardly any war to fight. But having been raised a warrior, I was taught this sacred song. So though alone, I sang. I sang until my throat was parched, and no words would come out anymore. When I finished my prayer and ritual, dawn was already breaking. I stood up to rouse the men who would fight with me. There was still some time to talk among the men about our strategy and how it was bound to likely fail. I no longer feel nervous. This is the day of the reckoning, and I will give it my best. Mm -hmm.